afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. For some Vermonters, deer season is the season and it's taking place right now. The use of a rifle is allowed through November 25th and during the first nine days of December, hunters can use a bow and arrow or a muzzle loader to try to land the big buck. To find out more about deer and deer hunting, we've called on an expert from the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Nick Fortin is our guest. Nick is the department's head deer biologist and he is responsible for all aspects of deer management in the state. This is a very busy time with you. It is very busy right now. And so let's start with looking at the big picture. What is the size and the health of Vermont's deer herd? Uh, deer herd's doing really well right now. Uh, we're coming off three what we would consider below average winters, mm -hmm. two very mild winters, and, and last year was a little closer to average, but three easy winters which is, have helped the deer population grow and, and in most of Vermont, there are about as many deer as we would like, and in some places, even a few too many. Mm -hmm. And what places have too many? Uh, primarily, uh, we're talking Franklin County, um, really the western side of the state, Champlain mm -hmm. Valley, um, down through Rutland, Bennington, um, along the Connecticut, basically lower elevation areas along the Connecticut River. Um, also, we tend to see that around where people live, sort of the more suburban, um, areas where it's a lot of small lots and not really convenient for hunters to go there and also mm -hmm. they may not have permission on a lot of that land right um, so those deer just don't get hunted as hard let's talk a little bit about that because there are some reasons why the herd is so robust weather is one of them but also the deer really don't have many natural predators uh, not really uh, humans certainly human hunters are, are the primary predator of deer that's really our only way of controlling the deer population um, you know natural Predators, non-human predators, uh, coyotes, black bears kill a lot of fawns in mm -hmm. the spring and summer, um, but it really doesn't affect the population. Okay. Tell me a little bit, too, about the issue of more people posting their land. Yeah, it's sort of a, uh, not a new phenomenon, but, right. but a, growing, um, a growing challenge for us. Um, you know, fewer and fewer people have a connection to hunting, um, perhaps have a bad experience with a hunter or a non-hunter. Um, and choose to post their land and, and a lot of those people still allow hunting but they limit it enough that basically we're not able to kill enough deer in those areas mm -hmm. to to c control the population. So how does the population compare to years past or even decades past? Um, compared to the recent past, maybe the past couple decades, mm -hmm. we're probably on the higher end of where we've been. We're not, I wouldn't say we're above numbers we've seen. Um, we certainly have fewer deer than we had back in the 60s and 70s when we had vastly too many. Um, habitat was a lot different as well. Mm. Um, but again, today, I think compared to the last, say, 20 years, we're about as high as we've seen um, over that, that span. And, and as I said, in a lot of areas, that's too many. What are the deer management goals in Vermont? Well, our primary goal uh, and, and really our, our mission as a department is to manage for a healthy and abundant deer herd. Um, abundant is <laughs> sort of subjective mm -hmm. and depends who you ask. Um, healthy is not really debatable. Uh, and so we try to maintain a, a, a number of deer that the habitat can support long term, um, meaning that the deer are not impacting their habitat, they're not impacting the other species that are out there. Uh, and so those deer are able to get all of the, the food they need and, and be healthy. And how do you figure that out? Uh, it's a little complicated. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we, we go out, we spend time in the field. We have a lot of staff that spend time in the field. We listen to, to other uh, natural resources professionals that are out in the field, foresters, um, and what they're seeing as far as the impacts deer are having on their habitat. Um, and that sort of tells us if we've reached that threshold or if we're not quite there yet. Um, we can also look at actually look at the health of the deer, and that's why we have our biologists go to the check stations on youth weekend, um, and then this past weekend, uh, opening weekend of rifle season, and actually take some measurements of deer body weights and antler size, and that tells us how healthy the deer are. And as you might expect, if their habitat is, if they're starting to damage their habitat, they're not going to be as healthy. Right. So we try to, once we start to see the health measures decline, we know we have too many deer. Um, and over time, I mean, we've been doing this for 60 plus years now, mm -hmm. um, we get a sense of how many deer that is, where that, where that threshold is. And, and so we manage, try to manage for no more than that. 
Talk a little bit about deer habitat and the primary diet and food source for deer. So deer habitat is, um, well, basically we consider everything that's not water or pavement to be <laughs> deer habitat. They're not too um, picky. They are not picky. Uh, they do very well in, in a fragmented landscape, so a mix of forest and field habitats, a lot of edge. Mm -hmm. um, people most often are going to see deer in fields feeding. That's a lot of the nutrition. Um, but actually, most of what we would, most of our deer habitat in Vermont is forest. Um, about 80% of what we consider deer habitat is forest. Um, and so it's really the health of our forest that, that dictates you know, how many deer we can support. Because they like to nibble on. Especially, new especially in the winter, that's about the only food they have is, right. is young trees um, and shrubs. You know, they can't feed in a field when it's covered in snow. Right. Well, last year there were about 63,000 hunting licenses sold in Vermont. 30 years ago, over 100,000 licenses were sold. Why has there been such a decline, do you think? Uh, the primary reason is, is simple demographics. You know, our, our, our population in the state is getting older, and a lot of our hunters are, are aging out of the sport, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in that time, we also have fewer and fewer people that have that connection to hunting. Um, but by and large, it's just a factor of, of our, our state, our population getting older. And I mean, our projections are, you know, as the baby boomer bump kind of moves through, uh, we're going to continue to lose hunters for at least the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And there's not much we can do about it. Now, the state has a special hunting season for youth only. Why is that so important? Uh, sort of along those same lines, trying to recruit new people into the sport, um, especially young people, get them, get them interested in hunting. Um, and the, the intention of the youth season is to sort of provide them with, with a mentored hunting, hunting experience that's all about them. So they can focus on learning the necessary skills. Um, someone can sort of show them where to, where to find deer, mm -hmm. you know, um, teach them about various, you know, field skills and, and deer behavior and um, hopefully have a positive experience um, that will hook them on hunting. Right, which is important to note. I mean, you don't just send kids out in the woods alone. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, really one of the bigger challenges for hunting, and, and most kids that do stick with it have a mentor, whether that's a, usually some family member, um, mm -hmm. sometimes an uncle. Um, the challenge of getting new people into it is, is finding someone to take them and show them how. Uh, and so this season sort of provides that opportunity um, where the adults aren't distracted by their own hunting because <laughs> they can't, so that they're focused on providing a good experience for the kids. When is it legal to hunt deer in Vermont, and what's considered a legal deer to take? Uh, so we have four hunting seasons in Vermont. We have uh, an archery season, which starts the first Saturday in October, um, and that lasts for four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we have the youth weekend, which is a couple weekends ago, um, for children, uh, kids 15 and under. We have um, the regular rifle season, which to most people is deer season. Right. Um, that's two weeks in, in late November. Uh, and then we have our, our muzzleloader season, which is, there's a week off in between, but then um, for nine days in early December. Um, that's also, to make it confusing, the second <laughs> part of our archery season. Um, so there's four different seasons, and each season has different weapons that are allowed. Um, obviously, archery season, you can use a bow and arrow. Right. Muzzleloader season, you have to use a muzzleloader. Um, and in any of those seasons, um, a hunter can harvest a buck. Um, typically, a legal buck in Vermont means it has to have at least two antler points on one antler on one side. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a method of allowing more, more young bucks to survive to older age classes. Once again, uh, this year, you're also asking successful hunters to help you out um, in time to manage the herd and see how healthy the herd is. What are you asking people to do? So our, we are, this will be our fourth year, uh, I believe, of um, asking successful rifle season hunters to um, provide us with a tooth from their, their deer. Um, they'll pull one of the central um, lower teeth and we're able to send that tooth out to a lab and they can section it and, and just like counting rings on a tree, they can tell how old that deer was. Um, and that's very important information for us, uh, not only to understand, you know, the health measures that we're collecting, mm -hmm. um, you know, as you might expect, a younger deer isn't going to be as heavy as an older deer, and right. so we need to understand that. Um, it also helps us with, with uh, population modeling, estimating how many deer are out there on the landscape, 
um, which then allows us to, to manage the deer more effectively. Talk a little bit about deer reproduction. Sure, so um, our hunting seasons in Vermont are, are timed during what uh, hunters call the rut, mm -hmm. um, which is essentially the breeding season for deer. Um, they breed during a, a relatively short window, essentially the month of November and, and maybe a few in early December. Um, and, and really uh, peak breeding is about the week of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. usually. Um, so it's this very narrow window where deer are, are acting kind of stupid because mm -hmm. they have one thing on their mind. Um, and the timing of that, that is actually driven by when the fawns need to be born in the spring. So fawns have to be born late enough where there's not still snow on the ground right. and where their mother is gonna be, um, have recovered from winter to be able to provide milk for the fawn. Um, but also they need to be born early enough that they can reach sufficient size before the next winter. Um, Cause a small fawn is not going to survive our winters here in Vermont. So they have this very narrow window when they can be born mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually survive. And so that's actually what drives when they breed. Um, Does weather affect that? I mean, we've been really dry and hot. Does that affect that at all? Not really. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's, it's physiologically for a deer, it's driven by um, day length, the amount of, of daylight, mm -hmm. um, the length of the day. Uh, so it happens the same time every okay. year, basically. Now the footage we've been seeing comes from a trail camera, or a game camera, and the deer seem to like walk right up to it and they're kind of curious. <laughs> is that is that what deer do? It's very, very typical deer behavior. <laughs> they're, they're very curious animals. Um, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of the techniques hunters use to, to try to attract deer uh, are really, they work because deer are curious. Mm -hmm. um, hunters, and, and I'll probably catch flack for saying this, but hunters often think it's, it's you know, attracting deer because they think it smells like another deer or they think it, you know, smells like food and, and deer are not that stupid, but they are very curious. Right. You know, they, they just, they, it's a new smell, they wanna know what it is and so they go check it out. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also advantageous to hunters often. Yeah, now lots of folks have heard of chronic wasting disease. There was news earlier this fall that that disease was found in Quebec. Does that concern you at all or is that going to affect Vermont's deer herd? Uh, that is a, a huge concern for us. Um, so chronic wasting disease is, is really the biggest threat to our deer herd. Um, it's, a, it's a disease that's similar to mad cow disease. Mm -hmm. um, the scary part about it is that uh, there's no, no tests on live animals for it, there's no treatment, no cure, and it kills every single animal that it infects. Um, if we were to get it here in Vermont, uh, it, it takes a while to really have an impact, but eventually it would cause a slow, steady, unstoppable decline in our deer population, which would not only spell the end of hunting, um, but realistically the end of people seeing deer. Um, it, it might take a couple of decades, but it, it would be devastating to our deer population. Uh, the situation in Quebec, fingers crossed, um, is in a captive facility, mm -hmm. um, actually a red deer farm. Okay. And so we're hoping it's confined to, to that, that farm and it hasn't escaped to the wild yet. How about um, ticks? I know there's a problem with moose and ticks. Uh, yeah, so ticks, ticks don't really affect deer mm -hmm. um, so much, but the deer tick, the black-legged tick, um, is certainly increasing and certainly poses a risk to humans through, um, because if humans get Lyme disease from that tick. Um, there's a bit of a connection between really abundant deer and, and more ticks on mm -hmm. the landscape, um, but the ticks don't affect the deer, just that sort of creates an issue for people. I know you're looking forward to deer season yourself. You're heading off to the woods. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I'm lucky enough I get to take most of rifle season off and, and pursue my, my passion, which is deer hunting. Well, well good luck to you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. For more information about deer and deer hunting or any other aspect of hunting or wildlife in Vermont, you can check the website for the Fish and Wildlife Department. It is vtfishandwildlife.com. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.